our memory very, very strongly. And I think it will make a, it has already made an indelible mark on our me memory, but we can only learn a lot of things for ourselves, for, not only for now, but also for the future. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of people know about the background of it. It's been going on in the, in the press, in the newspaper for the last uh, quite some time. Uh, but actually, uh, it's, a, it's a, like a family tree you can draw. And it, the origin of that, Baba Adam Jathabu Tha Pneumonia. It's a recent, but it's a recent descendant of a long line of viruses that thrive on human tissue and thrive on human cells, like all viruses do. They are living creatures that they have to live on something. And unfortunately, they have chosen us as their hosts, whether we like it or not. And it's, uh, this, its forefathers have been known as pneumonia, severe acute respiratory distress syndrome, mouthful of words, SARS, it used to be called in short, acute respiratory distress, ARDS, and so on and so forth. The most recent nickname that they got is COVID-19 because they discovered it, or they think they discovered it in, in the uh, middle of December uh, 2019. That's why he has done that. Now, uh, within a month of its official discovery, we find that it has spread everywhere. And uh, soon after the 20th of April or thereabouts, it has spread to most countries in the world. And as far as I know from the last count, it has gone into 209 countries. I don't know if there are many more countries left in the world that have not already uh, been affected by it. And it has infected about 2.5 million people, more in some countries, less in others. Some of them have overcome it, like China, and some are just joining them, by, by the way. In some, some countries in uh, Eastern Europe and so on and so forth, in South America, they are just, just joining us. Who knows how long this story is going to go on for. But anyway, the virus is very unusual, the way it has come, because of the force with, this, with which it has come, and the speed it, it, it has baffled us. Yes, there are viruses in the world. There are many other killers in the world. But the way this has spread out in a very short period of time, uh, that is very, very Surprising, uh, maybe it's a surprising is not a um, good word. Maybe shocking is, is, is more like it. So I'm sure there are, we will hear more about people who have been traumatized by this. And uh, it has enveloped populations. It has covered uh, people, communities within days. And before we know where you are, it is upon our doorstep, everybody's doorstep. And that is what is find surprising and very shocking, I would say, you know. All said and done, there's a surprising thing. It's not a mass killer. It affects the people very, very quickly, but it is not like uh, plague used to be or leprosy used to be in the olden days. Uh, it doesn't kill or maim or whatever, but it spreads very quickly. And the killing rate of uh, uh, coronavirus is about, around three to four percent. Depends on the age, depends on the uh, prior health of the person, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, usually, like every other illnesses, uh, it, it, it finds old people easy prey. The infer, infirm, the weak, and occasionally the children are also, unfortunately, uh, can get affected. There are various features why it has created a kind of a fear in us. First of all, everybody says there's no cure for it. We don't know any cure. And there is a, I find a very interesting uh, sort of ethos in the world that there's a very desperate race to find a cure for this. And sometimes I find it very refreshing. There's so many different, I think about nearly 40 to 50 countries in the world developed countries in the world, all in their own ways, working on to find the answer, a vaccine or something to this. I don't think it's ever happened before. Some countries have been doing it on their own, but now they're all, all together in it. Because we 
don't know much about it because we do not have any uh, clear cut knowledge and our imagination uh, runs riot. And I think like anything else, we don't understand. We create its magical powers and, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's why we have tidbits of information in abundance. Uh, often I f we find in the beginning reality giving way to wishes, you know, and there are people who come on the television and say, do this because this is the why it is going to kill the virus. And this is all imagination or maybe wish that we all have. These pseudo-scientific solutions uh, popularized uh, these old wives' tales and so on and so forth. They are uh, not a great deal of help. They only provide a temporary respite, but they suddenly realize, no, it doesn't work. And we can feel worse. Uh, I have seen, uh, you have also seen, that people are, some people are dumbfounded, and some people are really traumatized. And not surprisingly, uh, there are some communities that have been dispossessed, willingly or unwillingly. They scattered families. Everybody knows somebody, a member of country, who's stranded in America or UK or somewhere else, and they're waiting for uh, the, the, to, to find a flight to come home, but they can't do it. This is like an unplanned exile. And uh, to be abandoned in foreign land uh, makes a whole scenario, a sense, uh, sense of unreal, you know, and disbelief and denial, but there you are. Every morning you open your eyes, you see you are somewhere where you shouldn't have been and away from other people and you don't know when are you going to go back and, and, and what not. Apart from the physical problem that the, uh, the uh, virus causes, it has a psychological pressure. And that is the most important thing that we are going to talk about, the psychological pressure that it creates onto the people, onto the families, onto the individuals, and so on and so forth. And I'll come, come to that. There are some facts I'm sure everybody knows about. I'll quickly go through this, that older people get affected. They say from 30 to 79. Now we keep hearing from 45 to 80, or a retiring age and thereafter and so on and so forth. But the older you are, the more likely you're going to be affected by it. And the under 20 are still not very, uh, very much in the game. The incubation period is 14 days, yet it says it, it goes from two to 27 days. I don't know why they, they think the 14 days is the, is a medium, a statistical medium, but the virus doesn't know if it's a statistical medium or what, you know, but they have, uh, they have to put it to quarantine for at least 14 days. Now, this is a very novel experience that many people never had before in this generation but for the past few generations never had before, they are put in quarantine uh, because the infection spread through the air and also the uh, droplets of the mouth and the nose of the victims. And then if, you, if, if something has got these viruses, you touch them because it lives, sometimes it can live a very long time. On metal surfaces, it say it lives for, for, for many hours. And if you touch something and then you, sort of transfer to your mouth and whatever, you can easily get affected by that, you know. But still, the information is very, very uh, limited. Uh, the primary symptoms, easy to recognize, but they're in common with many other, many other uh, illnesses and ailments. Uh, high fever, cough, breathing problems, cough, dry cough particularly, and breathing problem and they can be uh, common in any other. But I think then we have to wait and see whether it develops into uh, this uh, coronavirus disease or not. Treatment, as I said, there's no known treatment that we know. We, all we can hope for is, is prevention and precaution. And they are these re remedies that have been left to us to, use, to work on so that we can cure it but we'll contain it. And that is, a, again, a very different approach than we have for, for, for other illnesses and other infections. Now, I'm just go a little bit in, in, in the psychology of it, that unfortunately the term that was used to begin with 
uh, for quarantine was social isolation. Now that actually frightened many people. They say, what the hell is social isolation? I have been taken away from my, all my friends and, and, and families and so on and so forth. God knows for how long and so on and so forth. They think the isolation is complete total isolation from the, the, the close ones. But they don't realize that we are very lucky. We live in a day and age that yes, we cannot be physically close at, a, at any given time, but we can still see each other, we talk to each other, we communicate as we are doing now, we communicate to each other and that makes a, a big, big difference. So social isolation is not a proper word. I think uh, it has frightened some people because it is like having plague or smallpox or uh, leprosy that we hear about these things. And more recently, AIDS, don't go near the person and so on and so forth. And the people who have suffered, they also get stigmatized by it. You know, that's also a frightening reality. And fortunately, the term social distancing is much closer to the truth and much more tolerable than uh, threatening and uh, stigmatizing, discriminating terms like social isolation, you know. The psychological side of it is, uh, it can also be looked at as an adjustment disorder. Now, whenever our reality changes, our body gets into a state of battle readiness, stress, pressure. So this is called adjustment disorder. We have become anxious, we can depress, we become alert, we can answer become uncertain. And I, I will talk about some of these things. And if it goes on for a period of time, this seemingly interminable state of affairs results in uh, loss, uh, sense of loss, loss of freedom, loss of close ones, loss of company, loss of job, loss of money or everything, and depression. Uh, remember, anxiety is always about the future, tomorrow. Depression is always about yesterday. So you can see that this thing can create simultaneously some anxiety about the future, what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen with my children, what's going to happen my, with my job and so on and so forth. And a depression that what they have lost and lost face, self-respect, freedom and so on and so forth. Anxiety, fear, loneliness, emotional and mood disturbances, all these things are very common. And Sleep disturbance. Now, everything is, is upsetting, but, but somehow sleep does have a very important role. Now we're beginning to realize sleep has a very important role in our maintaining our mental health. If we do not sleep well, that we can be, I mean, you can say, what well, the night that you don't sleep well, the next day is, is you are, only half of you is left, and so on and so forth. And this worry, constant worry, can also, it has affected. And if you're in a strange place, Diana can be when you go to relatives, you go to in a different city, first night you can't sleep because the bed is different, the atmosphere is different. Two, three nights, yes, then you get used to it. And the same thing happens with these people who are taken away uh, in, in uh, quarantine, in hospitals or so on and so forth, sometimes thrown together with strangers, you know, and they find it very difficult and that becomes uh, more depressing and uh, they feel more helpless. They feel they are the failures. They feel that they are uh, they're defeated. I suppose these are not very pleasant um, prospects. Physical symptoms and these symptoms, but they're all things happening. The other day I was reading that within uh, within about two, three weeks of uh, this spread of corona uh, in, in China, a lot of people, a lot of being thousands of people went to their solicitors and other uh, people reporting divorce. And they were wondering, why is this epidemic about divorce? Now, that's very interesting, you know, uh, because being alone, stuck up in the house, whatever, you under pressure, that you have a number of emotions. Uh, irritable, irritability is one. You can become very angry and you become very agitated. And you can, when you get agitated, you pick up, uh, if, if I may say, you pick up a fight with the closest person 
that you are with. And that's why there's a lot of bickering going on between husband and wife and so forth, because they're always together. There was time when they used to see two, three hours in the evening, two, three hours in the morning, and the rest of them, they're spending time in their own uh, jobs and work and so on and so forth. Now they've been thrown together for 24 hours and looking at each other. And again, there's with negative frame of mind, you don't look at the positive side, you look at the negative sides. And that has really a cost problem. And recently, uh, the similar kind of figures are coming up uh, from uh, UK and USA as well. That the divorce rate or people asking for divorce has gone dramatically up. Then there's a bereavement and grief. These people, hundreds and thousands of people dying in some countries. I mean, the uh, latest figure is about 800 people, six to 800 people every day in Britain, in UK. Uh, uh, more so in Italy, more so in France, and so on and so forth. And now, Thousands of people, 2,000 or something, 2,200 died day before yesterday in the United States. Now, there is a hell of a lot of bereavement and grief going on. You know, uh, the age doesn't matter, the stage doesn't matter. It's a relationship that matters when it comes to brief, bereavement and grief. People have been under so much oppression that there is always, the people report a lot more negative cognition, pessimism, and so on and so forth. And which is slightly frightening, I think, at this stage, unless we do something about it, is suicidal ideation. A lot of people are reporting of suicidal ideation. And that is a sign of desperation, that is a sign of uh, depression, and so on and so forth. The relationship uh, can vary under stress. Relationship can break very easily and the relationship if it's not going uh, well then it's this is the time when it's easily when you need people this is the time when the relationship break up and we are get isolated even our belief system uh, i mean in our our country uh, in pakistan people have uh, been talking about they become some have become more religious as you can see visibly openly, socially more religious. Even there are a few programs on the television coming out by religious people because we need some kind of backup. The religion give us this kind of a, a safety net and we suddenly find, yes, we need something like that. And that's why we get more and more involved in this. But the belief system in some other people is, is, is been shaken up by this sudden change. And uh, people have one of the, one of the common Fears, if you talk to somebody closely, common fear is the type of fear of death. Well, of course, we all have fear of death, but we keep it under control, we contain, and we do not allow it to interfere with our daily life, you know, normal circumstances. But this time, the morbid fear of death is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And there's a long, long list of symptoms. They're not entirely uh, exclusively for, 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 for uh, this can happen any other similar situation. The psychosomatic aches and pains, you know, uh, fear of going mad, difficulty in sleeping, I'll uh, mention, uh, feeling trapped. This, this is just a, I'm not going to go into quarantine. It's like being in the prison when you have not done anything. I mean, this is the way people think about it. And by thinking like that, they are making things worse for themselves. Because thinking does make a big difference how you experience a situation. Heartbeat increases, blood pressure increases, palpitations, appetite, and dyspepsia, so on and so forth, and panic and whatnot. These, these symptoms are rife among these people who are experiencing, especially who are first hand experiencing. And if, imagine if your street is, is cordoned off, you can't go out and nobody can come in for at least sort of 14 days. I mean, that is a very, I would say, that is a very claustrophobic kind of uh, uh, experience that uh, people have. They want to run away. No wonder. Government gives them just a little bit of latitude. And the whole half the city comes out of the street for no reason, apparently. They're, some people are coming from here to there, and some people are going from there to there. And But because they want freedom, they want fresh air, they want to go out, they want to be, don't want to be cooped up in that. And this is the, unfortunately, reaction to this. And uh, that's what we are seeing. But again and again, they say that the, the moment the government becomes 
little easy on them, everybody comes out. And even if they are not allowed, they will still they have open shops and so on and so forth and break the so-called law. That is the, is the thing. I think we have made a mess of the law. And uh, it's a law makers uh, and uh, those who maintain law, I think they are the biggest lawbreakers as well at the same time, unfortunately. Uh, they say, if you do this, you're going to go inside. So police catches them and they put them inside and then the order comes, let them go. I mean, it makes a whole mess of the whole thing, an emotional mess. There's no consistency, there's no predictability of life, and so on and so forth. And that adds to, adds to the, all these problems. So, what can we do? Uh, I think there's a lot we can do. If we start, stopped for a second, if we are agitated, we are, we are, we are uh, stimulated, we are ex we, uh, excited, and uh, emotional people very easily, readily have fight with each other. You can see that. I mean, a lot of fights is going on, even in Lahore, I mean, when particularly when they were dis uh, distributing rations or whatever, because people are getting bad, bad tempered as a result of this. But if we stopped and thought a little bit about it, there's a, a lot we can do. Everybody can do. We can do for ourselves and we can do for others that we are close to. I think the most important thing is whatever meager information that we have about this, we should take it. That this is what we know. What is what we don't know may not exist, but this is what we know. People start imagining you could do this, you could do that, and I can do this, and I can do that. You know, no, uh, I, I, this is all imagination, hope, uh, perhaps wild guesses. But this best thing is stick to the information that you have got. And then we have to make ourselves and the victims, we have to give them physical safety, comfort. And the only way we can manage is through prevention and precaution. At this moment in time, I don't know when the vaccine comes, but we are not going to wait until then. And I think we should start working on the secondary byproducts of this, uh, uh, this condition and we can manage it through prevention and precaution. These are our key strategies. We can block the whole thing and then we can contain it until it, the virus dies its own natural death. We understand that why I've been asked not to go out of the house. You know, I, I, I've seen children, they wanted to go, ask the parents, but parents never explain why is it that they don't want you to go. No, you're not going out. He told you, said, no, it's not good. You know, and so on and so forth. And same we do with the adults. You know, and a lot of the time there's a conflict between people. If we create conflict sometimes, we sometimes say yes, uh, uh, sometimes we say no without any rhyme or reason. And I think that we should be consistent and we should be reasonable and uh, manage our daily life in a consistent kind of way. Other important things are this, nothing surprising, everybody knows about it. But when things uh, go bad, then we forget that these are the three things that, that get disturbed. Diet, you don't eat well, properly. You don't feel hungry, either we overdo it or underdo it. Daily routine, we never have a daily routine. You know, and gradually, slowly, we get up later and later and later, and so on and so forth, and spend more and more time in bed. We, have, we don't have exercise, so we keep on putting on weight and keep on feeling down and lazy as a result of it. And they look at ourselves, we don't see a pretty side, there you go. Well, it's a downward spiral. If we learn to manage ourselves, I think that is very important. And that is not managing yourself, it's managing a big yeah, multinational. Uh, yes. A small basic principles, one can manage oneself and also one can manage others, for example, children and so on. Because we should know that yes, things are difficult. Uh, three to five percent perhaps will not be here in three months or six months time, but majority will be there, 97, 98 percent 
people will still be there. And we should believe that there is life after the uh, corona and there is life after quarantine. It's not the end of the world, you know, for the, for the general people. Uh, right. When we get into this uh, negative, negative frame of mind, that we only think about negative things, that we never, never think about the positive things. Even if somebody points out the positive, we don't, don't want to consider it. You know? We don't realize that our thoughts still are, and I'm not talking only as a clinical psychologist, there are many other people, wise people in the world, who also would bear with us on this issue, that our thoughts are very powerful. And we, we have to master these thoughts. And if we can master these thoughts, they can certainly help us. If we don't, they are going to bite us. The power of your thoughts is there. We have habits. And there is lies. It's a good thing to have habits. But at the same time, it's an automatic it's a part of ourselves. When we, are, when we are not thinking, we are thinking in a certain way. And if you used to be thinking negatively, when we are not think, thinking, we are thinking negatively. Relationships are very important. No matter how uh, close they are or how distant they are, every relationship has its own value in one's life. We are social animals and we are people that who uh, feel better if we are going, getting on with people. And whatever the relationship there are, we should try to cement them further. We try to come closer to rather than discussing I mean, I've seen a lot of people, even now, uh, with all the stress and strain, you know how is the stress and strain coming out? In this discussion, whether Imran is doing the right thing about the economy or not, and so on and so forth. And they're, they're, they're very, look at the television. Look at the discussion that is going on the television. That's supposed to be a role model. I'm sorry to say, I'm embarrassed to say, that, that is something taken as a role model, and people are uh, sort of popping this kind of way. This is how they discuss things by shouting, fighting on, the, on one another uh, rather than coming to some kind of conclusion. So relationships are precious things we should maintain at a time like this particularly. So we should have cohesion, cooperation, uh, not uh, conflict and criticism. This, is, this sounds like a sermon, you know, uh, but what I, I mean is that we should look for where we stand together rather than where we differ. Doesn't matter how, how far apart we, are, we may be in our thinking, we can still see that we are all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. Because if we sink or we swim, we're all in the same boat. And again, watch what you say, not only to other people, first of all, watch what you say to yourself. Oh yeah, oh, there's nothing, no future in it, and this, that, and the other. And that is, saying to yourself, and you are all passing the message to, to other people. Um, I think first I said, mind your mind, which we may be, you know when they say, if you want to, want to tell somebody, mind the step, mind your language, mind the, and in the same kind of warning way, I said, mind your mind. It can play tricks on you, it can help you, uh, or it can kind of take you further down into the uh, despair. Similarly, your behavior. Only mind is not enough if it is not accompanied by behavior. If nothing else, our mind, thought, and behavior that we behave in everyday life, they should go together for us to become more effective. If they are not, then we are, we are lame, you know, uh, we are limping rather than walking or running or anything like that. So ac apart from having the right kind of thoughts, regularly keep the missionary ticking evenly. Not that someday you work very hard and then, then you get exhausted and stay, take to bed for, 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 for two days. That's no way. That doesn't help your self-confidence. And you have systematic small goals and they should be linked. I, mean, I don't have these students to teach. I don't have their research institute. Well, some other things we don't have to do. But you can create your own goals. You can still socialize your people. You can still... Uh, thanks to uh, internet and the, the electronic gadgetry, yes, we can still be very close to uh, one another and maintain that kind of relationship. And I think if we think about it, if 
that if somebody, if you're living in different countries, you perhaps are more likely to have more regular conversations with one another than if you're living in the same house or in the same city. You can also find new things to do, take new hobbies or whatever, you know, and there are a lot of things. Open your old uh, cabinets <laughs> and wardrobe, sort things out, take the mess out, throw away, get something fresh, new, and so on and so forth. And the most important thing is tomorrow, yesterday is gone, because there's nothing we can do about it. Tomorrow is still to come. And we still have quite time and uh, opportunity to do this. As well as the clinical psychology is concerned, counseling is concerned, that what we have to do is, we should make sure that uh, the teams that we need, uh, unfortunately, what happens at a time like this, and I want to make it very uh, clear and publicly, <laughs> I want to say this, that good intentions can only go that far. After that, you need a certain degree of expertise. I've seen in the 2005, uh, when we had this big earthquake, every department of psychology, even undergraduates, they came out and they were said, okay, we're going to uh, uh, check people for traumas and this, that, and the other. And they, don't, they couldn't even spell some of them, what is the word trauma. They never mind how to handle other people's trauma. And they did more damage, both first aid workers more, and the so-called the, the counselors those don't know what counseling is and how it is done. They cannot do any, they did not inspire any confidence in our profession, unfortunately. You know, I must also said that, say that at that time, maybe there are still some people who will be my witness, that I stopped all the students in my MS clinical psychology, that they are not to go out visit hospitals and try to so-called counsel people who have just been uh, uh, dragged out of troubles of uh, houses and buildings and so on and so forth and brought all the way to the hall in the hospitals and they come and do that. And people ask questions without any reason. And I think sometimes that, that, can, that can be more painful. And uh, this way I will say that if you want to have, have teams, and you can train them. Just half an hour before I started this, uh, Omaiza, one of my very dear colleagues, clinical psychologist, she sent me a link. And it is something that is like, it's like my, my eyes opened, my dream coming true, something that I've been talking about but never been able to do very much about. It's called psychological first aid. Honestly, it's a wonderful idea. And I saw a little bit outline of their program. Of course, you have to pay for it, and it's an online program, and so on and so forth. Like, it's a wonderful idea that we should train our counselors, we train our so-called volunteers into first aid counseling. And uh, that is very important. You must have some kind of training. Good heart can only take you from this point to that point, but not very far. If you try to go further, you cause more problems than you resolve. There are techniques with a little bit of help, little bit of care, people can learn. A lot of people can learn the crisis intervention. It's a special way of handling people, who, which means that you shore up their defenses and let them be wherever they are, whatever they're doing, make them feel stronger and show them how they can still deal with some of these things. People who have got symptoms of trauma, yes, we have the techniques that may help them. And if you do it, if you apply them judiciously, with knowledge, with, with care and tact, that you can help these people. All these worries and repetitive things, thinking is thought control. Yes, we have got this cognitive behavior therapy, a wonderful mixture. It's, it's like a bi binary psychological bomb, you can say. Put these two things together and it can do a lot of good things for you. The thought as well as behavior. Cognition as a behavior. Let us train people in cognitive behavior therapy and to help these people, uh, those who have been suffering from this difficult time and trauma. You know? 
hence the social support, social network is always there. After you are treating the person, after the person is gone, cured, so-called, yes, the person still will need a follow-up service. People forget about that. You know, a follow-up service, the help, as some kind of social support and ongoing, ongoing help, if there is anything. And that way we can do a good job. So to summarize this, what I'm saying is that yes, in the beginning we were not looking and we tripped and we fell. We hurt ourselves. But now if you begin to understand, we can still stand up, just take the dust, brush the dust away, and we can deal with this far more competently, far more uh, sort of, uh, wisely, and we can certainly minimize if not, we can't completely remove the effects of it, but we can minimize that this kind of blight is going to affect us. Finally, I'm going to say something that is not very positive, by the way. I think, if you look at the history of it, every time a virus comes, it's stronger than the one before. Biologically, it has to be like this. Stronger than before. And we have to deal with, you know, more and more, uh, more and more bravely, rather and face it and deal with it. But that doesn't mean that uh, we should admit defeat very quickly and so on and so forth. But we are going to face these things because they are, they are here. They are also uh, use this universe. They are also here to, they were created to live as we are, but just like we live of some uh, other things, they live of us. We have to seek who is a survivor and who is the fittest to survive. And, and that's it. But we should remember that we have to develop these scopes. We are, we are quite capable of de developing technology uh, and develop techniques that will help us give more and more and more uh, victory over th these things. They were not going to go away, but, as the, but still we will be, we'll be here, you know, uh, many, many more years to come. The man is going to be here on this earth and uh, continuously uh, going to win. Okay, that's all I have to say. If anybody wants any questions, any points they want to raise, please do so. I'll be delighted to uh, hear them if I can't answer them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving us an overview. Uh, sir, the term you have used that unplanned exile, yes, I strongly agree. We already experienced it. Uh, sir, the thing which was shocking for me was that in this quarantine, uh, we all are striving to survive. Then how people develop societal ideation? Like other symptoms, yes, somewhere we all are facing it, but how the societal ideation can be elaborated? Is anybody else want to say something or... Is anybody want to say something or shall I address the issue? Okay, suicidal ideation actually is, it is the continuation of a, a depressive tone in one's life. You know, and they say that this, life is not good enough for us. They begin, begin to think. And uh, yeah, not the suicidal ideation, people with suicidal ideation always attempt to will commit suicide. But think about it. Yeah, it's a bitter idea. But that is only a temporary thing. You know, that is a sign of despair, a statement of despair that, that is expressed by people. But that doesn't mean that so many people are suicidal. That is different. We all have suicidal ideation from one time to another if we are in a desperate uh, state. Uh, uh, having to act upon it is something totally different. And not only that, they say, no, you can't go out. You can't mix with other people. You have to wash your hands. You have to change your clothes outside before you come into your own house, and so on and so forth. What the heck? This is going on. People get desperate as a result of it. And this is a sign of despair rather than uh, suicide, suicidal tendencies. You're right. Thank you, sir. Okay, anyone else who have any question?
How come it's an open discussion? Share your experiences and um, your stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People who are here, their contribution will be really appreciated. You discuss your stories. If there is an issue, let's discuss it. How we can make this uh, time more fruitful for us instead of living in a despair. How are you living with this uh, phenomena? Um, I'm fine. Uh, no suicidal tendencies as yet. Um, but there was just uh, Dr. Saab, uh, uh, Dr. Zahid, you have explained it very well. But um, it's a kind of outside thought which has nothing to do with the, um, uh, uh, with the coping uh, uh, strategies uh, during a pandemic. It's an outside thought, but it is a thought that maybe uh, I would like to share here, and that is that um, we are talking about uh, social distancing of uh, a certain class of people who are uh, uh, employed, who have a uh, source of living, source of uh, livelihood, and uh, they have been um, they have been made to stay home and work from home, but there is a, a very large part of the population of our country who do not have a job, the unemployed, and uh, those who are living uh, in one room, two families, ten people. They don't have any, um, any possibility or opportunity of social distancing. Um, and they also do not have this kind of a problem that we are discussing. Uh, the, the smaller part of the population that have this problem of coping. Um, in fact, what they are facing uh, these days is their daily wages which they have been deprived of because all businesses are closed. So along uh -huh. with this uh, coronavirus which is of course uh, a, a pandemic and is dangerous and is contagious, there is this social uh, problem which is affecting a very large part of our population in a different way. Um, it's just a thought that I wanted to share with uh, Dr. Zahid and others that uh, we should also think about them and uh, something needs to be done about them, not only psychologically uh, by way of helping them uh, psychological in, in a psychological way, but also in a financial way. But that is something which is a larger question. And as I said, outside the scope of this discussion, but still it was a thought that I, uh, and since uh, Saadia asked, I thought I should uh, share it with you. Thank you very much for your comment. You're absolutely right. I mean, you see, any kind of distress, when somebody is already having negative, uh, sort of uh, poor socioeconomic status, it doesn't add on to your, your distress. These problems don't add on. They multiply with your social economic status. So there's no, I mean, somebody who is a, a good businessman has got plenty of money in the kitty. And if he uh -huh. has to go uh, not earn something for a while, he can get by quite easily, you know. But somebody who earns in the morning so that their children can eat in the evening. Yes, this is a very difficult issue. Now, I'm not saying that I have a solution to that. Uh, this solution that has been uh, carried out 
for example, you gave so many, so many hundreds of billions in handouts, <coughs> in aid and in discussions and this, that and the other. I don't think that is a long-term solution. That is a temporary solution. Uh, I may or may not agree with the, the way it is done. You know, like people are trying their level best. Kharat, you know, it never makes you rich, no matter how much you give it to the person, to the people. But there's no doubt we are, we may not seem sometimes to us, we belong to a poor country. We belong to a developing country. A majority of the population is poor. But at the same time, the, the, the incidence of uh, coronavirus in the countryside is no more than 1%, you see? Because of the atmospheric reasons or whatever it is, you know. The needs are more on the condensed, dense population, dense in small, small, small enclaves, yes. But the problem is there, I'm not suggesting. And there are other countries poorer than us, more different, difficult situations than us, not far, very far from Pakistan, there are people who are in bigger troubles than we are, we can ever imagine. Yes, they are there. Where do we start? You see, there's the question, the, the 10 million, 60 million dollar question is, do we uh, try to try to do everything for everybody or do we start from somewhere? It's always a, a, a kind of ethical question and there's no logical rational answer to this. But we, the only other thing is that the more stringent our quarantines are, the more strict the rules are, the quicker we'll get over that. You stay at home for two weeks, then you come out for one week, then go home, go back for two weeks, you come out. So this is a very good way of prolonging the misery. We have to discipline ourselves to look at a long-term use. Yes, we have to be strict, rigid. Okay, stay at home and we'll give you, give you food at home, which will deliver to your doorstep. Yes, but we have to sacrifice your freedom for a period of time, not only for yourself, but for your others. We have to educate people like that. What they're doing is, look at that, half the shower is out, half the Lahore is out in the evening, just the same as if nothing has happened. So all the good work that we may have been done the previous two, three, four weeks, you know, they can go to dogs within a week. That's something that we have to understand. And we have to look at long-term solutions, you know, than, than just short-term solutions to appease people. Yesterday, day before yesterday, so many hundred people, because they were going out without any rhyme and reason, just walking about in the street, they were arrested. And next morning, a very high authority in Pakistan gave an order to release all of them. What is this? What are they trying to train people to? You know, do we have a kingship or do we have democracy? Do we have a rule or do we have just a personal, personal law? You know, I still don't understand. We behave one way, uh, our, our, our common sense tells us differently. And I'm sure uh, Rasab is, is he, he knows what I'm talking about. You know, I, I, I just want to. I wanted to add a little bit more that it's something like... Um, like Whoever it is, could you please speak up a little bit? Yes, uh, it's me, Sir Sara. Uh, it's just simply, uh, I think so, uh, sometimes it feels like, uh, you know, the, everybody's resources are reduced. And when your resources are reduced, you are being asked to work a little bit more efficiently. Some people are able to do it. Some people are having still difficulty to work more efficiently with the less, like minimalism. Above say basic, aapki, uh, you know, whether it's to do uh, in your professional life or at the personal level, her pot sari cheese limited open. And when they are limitations to us, limited kardi gang, now I've been asked, you can, you know, still work, still, uh, you know, carry on with the life and still move on, still spend this day. And over here, we need to, you know, uh, think about it how we can make this day a better. Uh, and you know, maybe right now the only requirement is to make yourself active and functional with, uh, you know, by staying at home, no matter what kind of, uh, you know, socioeconomic system, status you belong to, resources are reduced at every, every level. 
yes this is all wanted to say ushna wanted to add something also yes. uh, uh, i have a question uh, thanks sir sir uh, adolescents who understand all these things uh, they wash their hands again and again and they are very anxious about the situation how can we manage them i think for the period of time we should encourage them to keep up the good habit mm -hmm. you see they say that wash hand very frequently everything you every time you go out you come come back you should change your clothes you you should have a shower you should wash it and so so forth. every now and then you go and wash your hand it's a very good habit mm -hmm. you know so why i would not want to discourage them unless they they start counting how many times they are washing 20 times or 25 times in a day only then i will come on the scene otherwise i'll be quite happy to say that yes clean hands will make clean pakistan as they say yes yes Hello. sir you have a question Ji, uh, assalamualaikum. I wanted to contribute regarding uh, Ms. Sara's comment. Actually, uh, I think uh, since this is such a time of distress, we are all very confused and we have less resources for understanding. Ke liye. So everybody is sending us lots of crappy information also with this so much available WhatsApp data and stuff. So in this time of need, what's important is to not focus on the glass half empty, but on the glass half full. हमारे पास resources की कमी हुई है yes, लेकिन at the same time अगर हमें काम ज़्यादा करना पड़ रहा है तो हम कर भी घर से रहे हैं. So instead of thinking that online lectures is a problem, we should think that Hanji, we are also saving lots of money on the transportation. We are also not buying lots of petroleum. It's better for the uh, environment on the whole. आप घर में family time आपको ज़्यादा मिल रहा है. Instead आप बहुत सारी और चीज़ें हैं. जिनको अगर नेगेटिवली सोचना शुरू करेंगे तो हम सारों की नैया डूबेगी और अगर उसी को हम थोड़ा सा झटका मार के अपने आप को पॉजिटिव सेंस में लेके जाएंगे तो वी वुड बी मच मोर कंस्ट्रक्टिव एज ह्यूमन बीइंग्स ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम आई जस्ट एनालाइज माय ओन सिचुएशन From the home, I am uh, attending the lectures. So, because at 8:00 we start, so I get to wake up early. I save uh, an hour approximately without the makeup and stuff, without getting ready, without transporting problems. And then, when I get up, I get to see my children. I get 30-40 minutes to interact with my parents. We sit together in the evening and watch TV at night. At dinner time, we have a lot of tables at dinner time. At dinner time, we have a lot of tables at dinner time. So we have lots of positivities happening around us also. So in this time, जब और इतनी tensions हैं, सेहत की tension है, आपको ये है कि आपने बाहर नहीं जाना है, आपने online grocery करनी है, आपके किसी के काम वाली नहीं आ रही है, तो try to stay positive. People are so busy in dismantling in incomplete information or पता भी नहीं होता है और कमेंट उस पे ऐसे होते हैं जैसे I don't know how much resourceful they are about COVID so उनको उनको request करें request नहीं कर सकते तो पढ़ना छोड़ दें that's the technique I have adopted now मैं message ही नहीं पढ़ती वो corona से related बता भी रहा है तो भाई मुझे पता है मुझे अपने self isolate करना है मुझे अपनी exercise पे focus करना है family bonding पे focus करना है बच्चे पे focus करना है उसको अच्छा सा पढ़ाने और अपने जो students हैं उनको बेहतरीन पढ़ाने बस मेरा अभी का काम यही है मुझे अपनी main responsibilities को positive scenario में कंसीडर करते हुए करना अगर मेरे पास पे में कुछ बचता है तो मुझे वो जाके रमजान पैकेज आजकल बड़े अच्छे आए हैं उनमें से जितने मर्जी थाउजेंड्स निकले पांच बाय होते हैं छह बाय होते हैं एवरी मंथ आई ट्राइ टू फोकस ऑन दैट कि हाँ जी मेरे इर्दगिर्द जो लोग थे लास्ट मंथ उनके अलावा मुझे किसी क जिस तरह से डॉक्टर साहब ने कहा कि ये बहुत प्रैक्टिकल और सस्टेनेबल सॉल्यूशन नहीं है, but since अभी और बहुत कुछ हम कर नहीं सकते तो in my according to my mindset I thought कि जिनको जॉब्स मायसर नहीं हैं मजदूर खोल दिए हैं अभी लेकिन अभी बहुत सारे हैं जिनका घर अभी नहीं प्रॉपर्ली चल रहा है एंड दे इवन इन दिस सिचुएशन दे कम टू योर हाउस � 
उन तक खुद अप्रोच करें जितने हो सकते हैं अगर हम में से हर एक बंदा भी अपनी पे में से आई थिंक चार हजार भी निकाले तो दो तीन फैमिली का पैकेट पर मंथ बहुत आराम से निकल आता है रमजान पैकेट जो कि पच्चीस किलो वाला है आई बॉट माई सेल्फ तो इस वजह से वो मेरा कॉन्सेप्ट भी थोड़ा क्लियर हुआ कि नहीं इतनी भी नहीं है महंगाई जितना हम हर वक्त न्यूज से नेगेटिविटी एब्जॉर्व कर करके कर करके कर करते हैं ना अपने आप को डिमोरलाइज सो द होल स्टोरी शॉर्ट इज इन ऑल दिस नेगेटिविटी try to stay positive whatever the situation is it's hard as hell but you can do it we mm. we amas we babas we have the energy you know to a ghar ko wo ek sahi pattern pe leke la leke aaye aur chale because the kids are looking at us for guidance even as teachers also the 50 students okay. in my class all the time they have some negative thing to discuss aur phir unko kis tarah track pe la ke phir se batane ki nahi it's possible it's okay kuch naya hai बट इट्स ओके हम हम बैंड कर सकते हैं हम इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं तो वो अपने आप को खींच के उस ट्रैक पे लेके आए ताकि आपका माइंड पॉजिटिव वाइब्स छोड़े और आप अपने साथ दो तीन और लोगों को उस ट्रैक पे लेके चले यू नो इट्स समथिंग लाइक डॉक्टर ने पहले भी बात की है इट्स समथिंग लाइक यू नो बी इन दिस वर्ल्डेबल सिचुएशन वी हैव बीन आस्ट टू हाउ वी कैन बी मोर स्ट्रॉन्ग how how can we be more uh, focused toward our work or wohi baat hai yes that how we are grateful that what is what are the things that we are with now hamare tasks kon kon se hain maybe it could be those basic things jisko humne bahut arse se bhool di bhool gaye hain honge hum bahut arse se ignore kar rahe hain and somehow this boss is helping us to realize that uh, these are the basic important things chahe wo taking care of yourself hai taking care of your relationships hai uh, giving more having more quality relationships hai you know working on your relationships hai maybe uh, it is a time uh, you know we all of us are been uh, you know re- remind ended again these are the basic things which you need to focus on dr uh, navida kichlu is with yes. us and she is very very quiet uh, dr saiba would you like to add something yes i was thinking i will say something uh, dr rai thank you very much for a very informative session we've uh, learned a lot from it uh i was just hoping you know i uh, maybe i was wrong i was hoping that uh, first of all the anxiety is connected to the unpredictability of the situation the other thing is that uh, we cannot see our enemy so that brings about a lot of anxiety that you are fighting against something that is not visible all right and then i was hoping you know in today's session we be able to uh discuss something exchange ideas to change the mindset of the students because uh and to help students in which in whichever way we can uh to uh, add value uh to the knowledge uh, through online teaching and and put them in a mindset where they can feel that they are learning they are not are uh, losing the tuition that they have paid they are learning and is going to be okay later on and how they should cope with everything and to help them whichever way we can some of them do not have internet they do not have access to classes uh i time and again i'm practically teaching uh, on the telephone uh telling them what to do how to go about uh, learning things so i was hoping today we will discuss more how to handle students mindset how to put them at ease and tell them that this is a temporary thing is going to go away ultimately and we'll have a normal face to face classroom sessions in which we'll catch up with everything uh, that we are missing out at the moment so uh, people who are attending all the faculty is attending the session any ideas regarding that any ideas regarding putting students at ease helping student out uh, in different ways uh, whatever is possible so any comments on that i was looking forward to that yes i think uh, it's already sound advice no doubt about this uh, we uh, if there's one one thing that we would like to go home with all of us to go home with today 
Uh, sorry, you're already in your own home. <laughs> but uh, I just realized that. <laughs> so am I. Uh, the day that is that is that we are all responsible for our actions. This man goes on the motorbike, there's a woman on the, behind. He says, that while you're not wearing anything, there's this, that, and the other, you've got no helmet, and you're doubling on this motorbike. Don't, don't you know that this is against the law? It's because of uh, uh, coronavirus. I thought, what virus? I have not seen any virus. You're just talking about virus, virus, virus. Where is the virus? Show me where the virus is. I'm not going to believe this. And I'm not going to do all that you asked me to do. This man, public, and I was so surprised that this policeman was so polite, so gentle, and he was so lucky, this man, that I was not the policeman at that time, honestly. You know, people don't realize it. You know, unfortunately, I'm going to make a general statement, you know, that, I mean, sometimes the only invisible thing we believe is God. We don't believe in anything else that is also invisible. Not omnipotent, not everything, but still invisible. And viruses are one of those things. By implication, we know that their presence is, you know. And it's the way that it has attacked us that is also very aggressive. Otherwise, 400,000 to half a million people every year die of malaria. And another hundred of thousand people die on road accident. We don't bat an eyelid. Because the way it, is, it happens, we don't care. We got used to it, we got uh, uh, habituated to this, unfortunately. You know, every day we hear few people dying, the road accidents. It would, doesn't bother us to say, do something about it. So, oh, 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 how sad, and that's it, two seconds. This, yes, it has affected uh, two and a half million people. It has killed quite a few people, you know, thousands and thousands of them. You know, 200, 100 uh, uh, every day for many, many days in those countries whose population is between 55 million or something like that. Sorry, 5.5 million. America loses nearly 2,000. Two Not long ago, 2,220, two days, three days ago, in a day, they died. They do not have places, America does not have places to bury their dead. They're putting the cold storage in, in big super, supermarkets for the time being, because they, they do not have the manpower or places and, and so on so to deal with this. You know, and I think that man, human being, whatever is not all man is the most resilient creature ever walked on this earth. It will survive. Not individuals, but humanity, human beings will survive. And I think that quicker they learn something from it, the, the quicker they will stand on their feet. And, and, and reduce the suffering that it is. We are, we are, we are not understanding it. Okay, Ignorance has no limits, by the way. This is the attitude. We do not educate public. I mean, this is emergency. But when the emergency is over, that's the time that we, have, we tell people, we educate people about the social responsibilities. And I think that this is not, going to, to me, this thing is not going to end with, with Corona. You know, I think this should go on and on and on, this process of education. I mean, think about the people in Germany, people in uh, Italy, very educated people, very advanced people technologically and so on and so forth. What do they do? They say, oh no, it's not going to happen to us until they hit them. Italy was the first country that was hit, badly hit, then France, and then other places, and then Britain, of all the places, you know. And I don't know, uh, don't want to make any political statement, but uh, uh, the Prime Minister perhaps ever has been uh, saved by, the, by, by Corona, because he suffered from Corona himself. Uh, 
this is height of incompetence of a developed country and not to take care of it. Well, it is happening in France next door and if, uh, Germany next door and Italy next door. Just because you've left a common market, that doesn't mean that you left all the corridors behind. No, I think we have to think about our responsibility. Everybody has is responsible for our, to one's own self and to others. Halima, would you like to add something? Yes, uh, yes, I would just want to add something to the question that how can we manage students' uh, attitude in this uh, situation? So I think we have to listen to the students first. We should acknowledge the limitations they are facing. We should make them feel heard. And then we should instill the skill to see the best and the worst. Let, uh, uh, just like Dr. Zahid was telling right now that we have to educate them. That no matter how worse the situation gets, there will always be a way. And we have to assert this thing time and again in our classrooms. And ultimately, they will learn this thing, inshallah. Right. Thank you. I wanted to... Yes. Hello. Hello, Okay. So, um, I wanted to say that actually we have prepared our minds that we will be going through a very planned things that every day we will be planning and whatever we will be doing, it will be happening according to the planning that we have done. We have, uh, in somehow we have started disbelieving in uncertainty or uh, maybe we have overlooked the fact that uncertainty can also happen. The unknown can also come. So maybe this is lack of preparation from our side that we always believe that things will go the way we think and we do not <clears throat> believe that something unknown can happen. So from this is the time that now we, we should see and prepare ourselves and this is the message that we can give to our students that they should start preparing themselves for the things that can happen and that they foresee that could happen. <clears throat> the other thing is that this is, uh, we, as we all have told that we should be focusing on the positivity, positivity, but what is the way to think about the positivity? <clears throat> I think as teachers, we have to be very creative. <clears throat> Sorry. As teachers, we have to be very creative in our class. We have to understand that this is not the traditional and conventional class, uh, mode of class that we used to have. So we need to bring up with the strategies. Maybe we can set 10 minutes uh, in every session or in our every class to discuss with the students the new thing that they have learned about themselves today. We can talk about self-exploration. One thing that they have learned about themselves. For example, in one activity, I ask my students to think about anything um, with which they relate themselves a lot in these days. Some of them highlighted, we think that we are a clock. As the clock is, you know, running, so we are also running with all the stuff uh, that is being given to us by our teachers, like assignments, quizzes, etc. Another student said that I feel that I'm, I, uh, I symbolize myself as caged, like I'm in a cage. So, and someone said that I'm a lock. So these, these symbols uh, shows that what students are thinking about themselves. Who will open the lock? Now, I, as teacher, I have to ask this question from the students. Who will open that lock? Who will open that cage? Who have put uh, themselves in the cage? Only the uh, outer circumstances. Uh, don't you think that we have also a part in, uh, you know, uh, enclosing ourselves in the cage? And if the students say that they are a clock and they are running and running and running, then who is behind that? So partly they have also something to do in the circumstances that they are going through. So what we have to see we have to plan uh, our classes accordingly that we should have some re recreational sort of things in our classes. We can ask them uh, about their daily routine. We can ask them their difficulties. And as Halima said, we, we have to keep on acknowledging that in worst circumstances, they are doing their best. They are trying to connect. And also we have to make our mind that all these disruptions, all the internet difficulties that we are facing, all the connecting and disconnecting things, and all the other stuff that difficulty in understanding others is now part of us. We have to own us. The okay. way uh, we uh, own Aisha, 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 let us give somebody else outside ICP a chance to talk about this. Okay. We have outside ICP. 
फ्रॉम अदर डिपार्टमेंट जैसे राहत लैन सब बोले थे बड़ा अच्छा एनी डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू जो कोई दे सके कोई कोई नहीं अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन हां जी सर एक्चुअली द पीपल हु आर ऑन बेड रेस्ट बिकॉज़ ऑफ सम फिजिकल और मेडिकल इलनेस हाउ कैन वी हेल्प देम बिकॉज़ दे आर डेवलपिंग एनशियस सिम्टम्स बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस सिचुएशन एंड दे आर नॉट कंप्लाइंग विद डीप ब्रीथिंग एंड ऑल दीस एक्टिविटीज सो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटीज वी कैन सजेस्ट देम एनीबॉडी वांट्स टू एड्रेस दैट क्विकली क्विकली ब्रीफली right i think that we uh, we should know that inactivity can also make us very restless and i think we can suggest few things to people who are lying in bed for certain reasons but let's see what they can do rather they cannot do you know i think there's a lot of things i mean I'm, i have i have to go through the whole encyclopedia of uh, behavior management to answer that question question in a very general kind of way look at the strengths and weaknesses of the person what are the strengths you know let the person you know today lot of things are available we never use them you know for example if somebody i mean no i don't want to go into that because there are thousand and one different possibilities that come to my, my mind we can do that help the person to fill their time not with their thoughts not with anxiety but with something else something more constructive the choice is theirs and we can help them train them into think in the kind of way that will help them rather than make them more anxious and more agitated and more irritated normally this is what we do by the way you know लर्निंग हो रही because they only associate learning while going to classes while coming to the university unke liye learning sirf wohi hoti hai so the thing is that we need to ensure them that learning ho rahi hai like hum log ke online classes chal rahi hain only the mode of learning has changed the nature of productivity has changed we can still be productive yet in different ways pehle we used to come to university now we need to come up with new interests new activities we need to develop an insight about ourselves that what uh, resources do we actually have it's not about the resources that we have it's about how resourceful we are uh, within the resources that we have how can we utilize those resources and how can we be more productive within those resources so we need to um, basically a uh, focus on this uh, maybe the teachers besides conducting online classes they can assign small tasks to the students uh, to in make them feel that yes the, their, their learning is taking place and productivity is taking place and um uh, secondly sir i would just like to ask uh, your opinion that what would you suggest for people who have been having uh, ocd symptoms uh, before the corona uh, this pandemic situation and now because of this that they're hearing all the time ke bar bar haath dho hand washing hand washing so it's actually jahan pe uh, recovery start ho rahi thi it was in progress but now uh, the symptoms are um, actually aggravating back to its normal uh, condition as it was uh, before so it's actually getting worse i think uh, i think th th these things are very small price to pay and i don't think if you give somebody a rationale for washing their hands every half an hour that is not reinforcing their ocd if he is doing it that we are not going about the right way Right. I think I wish more people wash their hand every hour on the hour, if not not more frequently than that. Especially at a time like this one, you know. So we yes. can say that there are times when you think your hands needs washing, but when you mm. know that your hand needs washing, that's when you mm. wash. It's not OCD. You can do the twenty times if you want in the day. So I think Are we you? have to put things in perspective. Not everything becomes either health or illness. There's something, right. time and a place 
in which you can do certain things. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Baki, yes, people are putting more and more emphasis on productivity and, and so on and so forth. At a time like this, a crisis, this takes a second. First, you're, how you're managing yourself. I think that's more important than your productivity. And we are, we are, we are productive, as you know. There are few people, they may have some, some reservations about this. Again, they still cannot come up with a better idea than online teaching to fill in the time so that when they have, when, whenever we go back to classes, we are not absolutely uh, sort of knowledgeless. We still done something. 20%, 30% what we have done otherwise. Yes, but there are other things that we have to become equally important and that is how you are managing yourself, managing your mind, managing your body, managing your morale, and so on and so forth. That is very important. So that you can maintain the health. Then when you come out, then you come as a healthy person, not very productive, but very ill person. That is not the answer. With, um, I was reading about one of the epidemics and the similar sort of things happened. People became, they became exhausted with good work they've been doing, you know, but that is not the answer because then they become ill. So we have to make sure that we look after ourselves and we look after people close to us and what job we are supposed to be doing. Yes, we should. It, life is not just productivity. I mean, that is, uh, but also quality. And that is very, very important. And I think that a lot of people can maintain. If they think about it, they can maintain. Even they're, they're in bed, you know, yes, they can maintain certain degree of social life. They can maintain certain degree of productivity, certain degree of reading, writing, this, that, and the other. Yes, they can do that. Anybody, anybody else have any question? Because we have just, I think so, few minutes left for the session. Sana Mariam ne hath khada kiya tha. Ma'am, I have a question about OCDs, lekin wo mujhe pata chal gaya ki wo next session mein shayi discuss hoga. To isliye. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for everybody who uh, came and joined the session. And I must say that you all have a very important part of open house discussion tha, uh, where you all highlighted one of the few areas also that in which you wanted to uh, you know, talk about more. One is about, uh, and we will be, we are all, uh, ICP is making a list, inshallah. This is uh, the first workshop. Um, uh, you know, uh, conducted by Dr. Zahid. Uh, next, inshallah, ICP will be launching, uh, you know, series of workshops that will be about the awareness sessions and uh, targeting that how we can make as ourselves as a teachers and even as students more functional, um, uh, you know, uh, and how we can um, manage ourselves in this pandemic situation. Um, you know, and uh, anything else, um, you know, sir, you wanted to add over here, um, you know, uh, to as a concluding, uh, concluding remarks? Uh, no, I don't want to. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything to add to this. I just want to thank people for coming and yes. taking part in it. And I think that we should keep this dialogue going. I as I always say in the classroom, you know, keep the dialogue going. We have set aside certain part of Friday only for this purpose. Self-grooming, you call it or keeping the dialogue going. The more we do, more we learn from one another. You know, mm -hmm. I think that we should keep on some kind of discussions and other things going on. And I'm sure that we will end up learning more and more and become mm -hmm. more and more strong about how to cope with these kind of difficult times. There are difficult times. I'm not saying that it's easy. There are difficult times, but how well we manage them, that is a mark of a successful person, a mark of a psychologist, perhaps, make a person who is, who is uh, in charge and control of oneself and so on and so forth. That how do we manage ourselves in difficult times? So all sorry. I can say is, uh, sorry? I was about to say thank you, sir. <laughs> may, may, I was going to say the same thing. I want, just want to thank everybody for coming and taking part in it. I think that is also very encouraging from us. 
and we will certainly, you suggest the topics. So we won't have a discussion on this particular topic, directly or indirectly related to either Corona or studies or students or anybody. You know, we, there's no holds barred. If it's bothering us, we'll discuss it, especially at a time like this. When we have something, so many things about bothering us. And if these things, if you can get out of the way, I think we can make it road much clearer for ourselves. So thank you very much. And uh, we hope we will very soon. Uh, I want to once again thank Sadi Asif for organizing this. And he has got a very good sort of channel through which we can, we can approach many, many people. Thank you very much again. Thank you so much for your valuable time. And thank you all the participants who actually contributed to this uh, workshop. Hopefully we will see you again in further uh, meetings and in their workshops also. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.